Hey, I'm Heavy Bloggers Heavy's Brian Shields at the Red House in Walnut Creek, California, where more than a couple of years ago, Fallujah played their first show ever. Now they're back in front of the home audience, fresh off Summer Slaughter and on a short run with Art Spire. Before the show, I run into Fallujah drummer Andrew Baird, and the discussion turns to the ideas behind the new record, The Flesh Prevails. Those were actually, believe it or not, picked not only from influences that we considered to be like based off of music and other bands, but also from like like movies, you know, like really good books that we've been reading. Um, good examples are like like Game of Thrones, like Lord of the Rings. Uh, we're like huge fans of the movie Blade Runner um, that had Harrison Ford in it and stuff like that. Just just Bill classic. Dick too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's great. Absolutely. Um, I'm personally just we're just, like we just have all these personal influences that we've like come together and put together as like our focal point for for what we consider the plus prevails to be achieving like this level of inner strength carving stone you know chisel out this best form of yourself kind of thing you know power influence like inner control kind of stuff you know so and a lot of it literally does come from like like video games and lord of the rings just really cool things that just make you want to get up and like just help you try and achieve like this the best version of yourself pretty much yeah. More with Andrew in a minute, but I wander around the back and run into Cameron and Ron from Inanimate Existence, along with Fallujah and Archspire, some of my top records of the year. Cameron says they're already working on new music. Yeah, no, we got uh, one song coming up. We're writing a storyline for the new record. Uh, like how the last CD we had the, uh, the whole story thing. We want to actually like do the story like really thick this time. And make it like really in depth with like more characters, more just fucking random bullshit, more deep uh, universe to kind of immerse the listener in. So yeah, we're trying to make it really deep. We're trying to, but we do have one new song that we are gonna play on the tour. We don't even have lyrics for it yet. So in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be writing and trying to get some lyrics for that. Better get on that shit, right? Yeah, Yeah, you'll you'll be hearing some new shit very soon from us. Also on the bill at the Red House is the Zenith Passage, where guitarists Justin McKinney and Rob Miramonte are still eager to release new music. Record's done. Just a matter of getting the studio time. Uh, I want to say it'll be out next year. Unfortunately, I know we said it was going to be out this year, but, you know, with time constraints with school and, uh, personal, you know, lives and personal lives and whatnot. Personal lives. Unfortunately, you know, I'd like to dedicate all the time I have to the Zenith Passage, but, I mean, you know, of course, everyone knows life gets in the way, but... Yeah. Um, it's coming, regardless. It's, yeah, it's coming out. It's the song... All the songs are done. I mean, everything's done besides the recording process. If you come to one of our tours, I mean, one of our shows, rather, on this tour with Archway, you will hear three new songs. <laughs> Next, I step into the green room with Oliver and Dean from Archspire, where the talk focuses on vocals and the love people have for tech death. So there really is kind of that core audience out there for this kind of music. Yeah, there definitely is. Um, yeah. I think I, I think there there is, but there's also younger audiences that are sort of into other subgenres that are sort of end up leaning towards this genre. I mean, I know like we get grouped into a lot of like deathcore and. Uh, and genres like that, uh, which is great because it's more people listening to us, and, and so I think it is a very honed-in sort of uh, sort of genre. But uh, but I think it's expanding a bit with the younger kids. We we hope that if a if a metal fan comes to a show that doesn't necessarily always like tech death, like oh I'm not always just at least they'll come to the show and it won't be like this band sucks. They'll be like okay, yeah. well this is kind of what we're we're at least trying to do something all right. So it's. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's a very specific niche, and not everybody's gonna like it. But uh, we try to make it so that nobody hates it. And then, obviously, I think the other thing that really makes this record stand out from everything else in the field really is is this gentleman here on the left. I guess on the left. Camera <laughs> left. Yeah. My you're on camera right. right. Camera, camera, camera left. Camera left. <laughs> exactly. Camera left. Yeah. Which you know, I mean, it really is an astounding vocal performance that I don't think we've heard that much like it in the genre. Thanks, That's And cool. you know, and obviously I think a lot of people who are of a suspicious mindset in the world said, oh, that's all fake, that's all quantized. And then you put out that video and I, yeah. it's like, holy shit, that's not fake. Yeah, no, well, no, it's not fake. I mean, uh, you know, we, we write uh, just a bit above our ability. Uh, and you know, when, when we all write together and we go into the studio, uh, with the intention of, of being able to perform what we write. I mean, obviously, but we're going to push our, our level. So, you know, uh, that being said, I mean, yeah, like I, we wouldn't want to do something we couldn't actually perform live. 
Um, you know, but I think it has been done before. It just hasn't been done to the extent that I've done it. I mean, there's like, you know, cabinet spawn of possession. There's some really fast vocals on that that are amazing. Uh, there's definitely some other visceral bleeding. Visceral bleeding. Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, Corpse Grinder, you know, he does some really fast, cool stuff. Yeah. So I think it's just taking those influences and then sort of just making it more of a solid uh, influence in, in our music and that coming through. So. And now back to Fallujah's Andrew Baird, who's excited that audiences are recognizing his band's distinctive style. Uh, we've had we've had these individuals come up and say like we just know you guys like through the sound you have you have your own unique style now and it's like it kind of boggles our minds because like I don't think I have like a style I'm just trying to play really heavy drums and try and do stuff that's outside of just the typical four four blast and fill to double kick and more blasts and then more blasts and it's really cool it's really cool to 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 hear from people that we've developed something that they can recognize as like. Oh, this one band's awesome, but dude, you've heard Fallujah? They got this, oh, they got these atmospheric elements. Oh, they got these, they got these single, like, big tones or big, big notes. And they, they're backed by, like, these intense guitar, guitar fills and riffs and drums that are just, like, just beyond this earth. Like, I've heard that from an actual person, by the way. Someone actually told me that not too long ago on Summer Slaughter. At the Red House in Walnut Creek, California, for Heavy Blog is Heavy, I'm Brian Shields.